Innalhamdulillah Innalhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inahu wa nasta'gfiruh Wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina Wa min sayyati a'malina Man yahdihillahu falamudillalah Wa man yudlil falahadiyalah Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Sallallahu alaihi wa sallam يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلق من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلالة في النار ثم ما بعد My dear brothers and sisters today I have a uh, unique proposal for us as a community in these hard economic times and as we know difficult times call for difficult decisions to be made Many of us are suffering uh, financially doing whatever we can to provide for our families and sustain our our way of life however comfortable or uncomfortable that may be so i've come up with a a plan and it may seem a little bit odd but i want you to hear me out through the entire plan okay we're going to plan the perfect robbery and i've already done all the work all of the investigation into which houses that we can break into. We just have to select the target. So I'm going to share with you target number one right here. I have everything ready. Target number one is a palace. It's the king's palace. The exterior of the palace, beautiful landscaping, gardens, has uh, marble patios, it's large pastures of green grass for grazing animals, well lit with brass lanterns placed around the compound. There's water features with statues of great value. The interior of the palace, it's been professionally decorated as you can imagine, contains fine art, a collection that uh, is extremely valuable. There's a very expensive ornament, or excuse me, oriental rugs, antique furniture, a golden dining set and flatware, every luxury you could ever imagine. There's a, a list of the items here and their value. <clears throat> There's also a bonus for this palace. It contains a vault. In the vault, it's riches, diamonds, rubies, gold, platinum, all the wealth that you could ever need or imagine that you would want in this life. And then on top of that, in the palace, there is the crown room, which is typical of the king's palace. And this is where the crown is kept safe, the prized possession of the king. This crown, of course, is valued at what you could consider to be priceless. That if you were able to sell it, then you could only imagine it would probably be worth all that the house contains or the palace contains and more than that. This is target number one right here. Target number two, a little bit different from target number one, it's the suburban two-story. Many of us here, we live in a suburban two-story, so we already know kind of what's in it. Average size property, it's a double car garage, above ground swimming pool. The exterior has nothing of real value other than some lawn furniture that you could probably get a couple of dollars out of if you, if you walked away with it. Inside the house, however, there's some possibilities for us in this plan. There's two flat screen TVs, there's three or four computers, a desktop, and a couple of laptops. 
There's some inexpensive paintings and decoration. There's silver flatware, which is family heirloom. It's been passed down from generation to generation. Could have some value. Majority of the furniture was purchased at a furniture outlet store. Uh, and there's a few antique pieces. So you're not looking at a whole lot, though there is a little bit of value to be taken there. The bonus for this house, it's two-story in suburbia, there's a small portable safe, right? The house owner has a small safe, has a combination, and in the safe there's probably some cash, maybe some valuable documents, maybe a little bit of jewelry, and then of course there's a small jewelry box, gold and silver, a few knickknacks and trinkets that were probably given to the wife of the house that she keeps on the nightstand. All of this, it could bring us a little bit of money. That way we could turn things around in our, in our economy right now. Next, target number three right here. By the way, the uh, itemized list is also included for details, the value of everything in the house. Here you have target number three, not much included with this one, but just uh, for sake of uh, being able to choose, it's a studio apartment on the bad side of town over there. It's a large parking lot. Cars of no real resale value. There's no landscaping, of course, or, or yard decorations of any value. The interior, as you can imagine, is a studio apartment. Um, has a secondhand, has secondhand furniture in there. It's a black and white TV. A stained builder basic carpet. Uh, one bed with no headboard. The closet's empty, so there's no bonus. There's no safe, there's no jewelry box, there's no hidden valuables. Now, when you look at these three properties, a decision has to be made. A professional thief, we have to weigh our options. What's the payoff and what's the risk? The payoff for the first one obviously is the best, but the risk is the highest, and I'll tell you why. There's some security issues that pose a threat. Exterior security is video surveillance. There are armed guards on a 24-hour rotation. There's one entrance and exit through a fortified electric fence. The property is surrounded by a 12-foot reinforced wall with watchtowers at every corner. Every line of sight is covered by motion sensor spotlights. Entry is considered impossible. If, however, we're able to devise a plan to get past the wall and past the exterior surveillance and guards, the inside of the house, it is bolted with a finger pad security keypad. There are windows which are reinforced and secured by steel security treatments. Video surveillance, there's a security staff around the clock. Infrared beams, body heat sensors, there's a pressurized floor in the crown room and in the vault. So if you step on the floor, the alarm goes off. The vault and the, the, uh, the crown room will also lock immediately when the, when the floor has been uh, triggered. You have interior security lights which remain on constantly 24 hours a day. The vault is reinforced and can withstand the blast of a bomb. The crown room has two armed security guards at all times. And the crown itself, the prized possession of the king, it is set in a reinforced glass case with a collapsible floor so that when the glass case is breached the floor will collapse and the crown will drop into a secondary safe. On top of that the king himself uh, vigilantly monitors all of the security and the property at all times. Again entry is considered impossible. When we look at the second house our two-story in suburbia, there are also some security risks. Not quite like the King's Palace, of course. The exterior security, there's a porch light. It's turned on manually by the house owner from time to time when he or she remembers to do so at night. Uh, the owner has two large floodlights out on the front yard. One of the floodlights is pointing up towards the flagpole and the other one is pointing towards the garden right in front of the house. Interior security, the house contains a dog of medium size. The doors are dead bolted. Standard windows have locks like any house would. This is done whenever the 
homeowner remembers to lock the doors at night. And he often leaves the car in the parking, in the, in the driveway open as well, doors unlocked. Practically inviting us to come on in, take whatever it is that we need. And you could imagine that the last target that we have on our list here, the studio apartment in the bad side of town, the parking lot is full of cars. There's no light whatsoever at night. All of the lights have been busted out. And the locks on the exterior of the building have been tampered with and already broken. So the doors are open 24 hours a day. Whenever we want, we can go in there and we can get whatever it is that we need. This is the situation. This is the proposal. So what I want you to do is take a few minutes, or just take a few moments and think about what would be the best target for us so that we can begin to change our lives, change our economic situation for the better. بسم الله والحمد لله حمد كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسانا إلى يوم الدين وبعد As many of you are sitting there wondering what type of interesting plan this is, if you thought about it for a moment, what house or palace would you break into? Obviously the palace, that would be the score of a lifetime. If we were able to break into the king's palace, uh, we could retire probably after that initial break-in. But as Benny Adam, if you give them a valley of gold, they only want another valley, so our career would have not be short-lived. We'd have to continue, and eventually, we would either be caught or we would be killed. So it seems like here when we're weighing our, our value and our risk, that the risk, it obviously outweighs any type of benefit that we could get, as it's almost impossible to imagine that a person would be able to break into the king's palace, guarded, protected, under video surveillance. The moment there's a threat, action is taken. And it is severe and swift. This building is fortified to the hilt, the top of the line security. Everything you can imagine, no expense was spared in preserving and guarding and protecting the treasures of the king. This is almost considered to be a suicide mission to try and break into something like this. On the other hand, you have the studio apartment, the opposite end of the spectrum, on the bad side of town, no security. No lights even. There's no locks on the door. We could walk in and out of the place whenever we wanted. We could take whatever we wanted, but because of the nature of this house, there's nothing in there of any value. It's dirty and stained, old and abused. Nothing there of any sustenance that would even entice us as professional thieves to look into a house like this. Rather, it would be a good place for a safe house. No one's interested in this property. We could hide out in that place. We could even recruit people, probably from that area, from that neighborhood, to join us and to join our crew. So, that only leaves us with the last property. You see, the career of a professional thief is that they're looking to be in business for years. And they have to target homes or valuables that can, be, that can be acquired over a long period of time. So when you look at these two places, the palace and the studio, both of them, we're going to get rid of even the idea of it and move on to the next one, which is the house, the two-bedroom house, which is, when you look in the American society, this is the average home. Of course, you have those who live in palaces almost, and you have those who live in, in, in these studio apartments and the likes of them, very low, the very rich and the very poor. But the average person, they're living an average life with average income, with an average house, all of that, and they have average security, average protection, they have average goals, average desires. So this is where we're going to pray. This is going to be our hunting ground. This is going to be our career. 
if you don't think it's a good idea that you could be successful, there's actually a very famous professional thief that has been at this for a very long time. Stealing, planning and plotting. Very successful. You may recognize the name. Iblis. Iblis, he doesn't steal from your home. He's not looking for your car or the keys to your safe. He's not looking for your gold, your riches. He's not looking for your, your money. He's stealing from your heart. Iblis is making a plan at which heart he's going to prey upon. And when you look at these three different homes, you can compare them to the different types of hearts found within our chest. As was mentioned by Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawzi rahimahullah, he says that the palace, it is the heart of the believer. The heart of the believer is filled with righteous deeds done for the sincere sake of Allah azawajal. His heart is enlightened by the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His awareness. The light, in fact, of that knowledge of Allah azawajal is so strong that it burns away any trace of ignorance and it destroys and melts the whispers of Iblis. The heart is fortified. It is protected with the reliance of Allah. The trust put in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this king, he has covered his heart just like he has protected his palace. He has covered his heart from desires. He has covered his heart from oppression. And because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guarded the king's heart as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guarded the heart of the believer more than he has guarded the heavens. The heavens, the dwelling place of the malaika, the place of al-wahi, the inspiration and revelation of Allah azza that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected the heavens by His guardians, the malaika, and given them the stars as their ammunition against the shayateen. The heavens of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are locked, they are shut. There is no penetration happening. There is no sneaking in or out. The heart of the believer in the sight of Allah azza wa jal is more valuable to guard than the heavens themselves. The heavens, which are enlightened by the obedience and the dhikr of the malaika. How can you compare that to the human being? How can you compare that to us? In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the heart of the believer, it is the resting place of tawheed. It is the resting place of true iman and love of Allah azza wa jal. And this is more deserving to be protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than anything or anyone. And with the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no vulnerability to Iblis. Except in the few instances when the believer, they have moments of forgetfulness. And they are able to regain their composure. When we look at the other heart, the other situation, the studio, flat, empty and void. Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim, he says that this heart, it is the heart of the denier of faith. The disbeliever in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the heart of the munafiq, the hypocrite. It is empty. There's nothing to steal. There's nothing to take. It's already been looted. Its contents have already been taken by Iblis and his army. There was an example that took place during the time of the Prophet ﷺ amongst his companions, namely Ibn Abbas anhu, when he was asked, or it was said to him, that the Jews, during that time, they used to say that in our prayers, we don't have wiswas. We don't have whispers of the shaitan. We don't have distractions. In our prayers, there is solitude, there is serenity. There is nothing drawing our attention, calling us away from what we're doing. They must have a purer heart, a stronger faith. 
more resoluteness in their belief. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he says, regarding this statement, what would the shaytan do with a heart that is already empty? What would the shaytan do with a faith that has already been changed? He's already done his work. He does not need to return. He's already set them on the path of bankruptcy. There's nothing there. This is the case with the denier of faith. The one who has turned away from Allah They do not have any need or anything of value for the shaytan to look for. In fact, this is the place that the shaytan has taken his rest. In this empty heart, the shaytan is taking this as his dwelling place. Whatever he says, whatever he commands, that person falls in line and becomes from the awliya shaytan, the helpers and the aiders of iblis. And we see this in our lives, in our society. That there are people that inherently it seems that they're nothing but evil. There's no good. The only thing stopping them from doing the most heinous of crimes, the most evil of things, is our society. The man-made protection that we have. The laws that govern us. If it wasn't for that, they would do whatever they wished. Shaytan would order them and they would act. He would send them and they would go. And then you have the other house, the one in the middle, not the highest of society nor the lowest, the two-story in suburbia, the average home, the average heart, the average heart of the human being. It contains some light. There is some knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is some righteousness, but at the same time, it is plagued with doubt. It is plagued with ignorance. It is overcome at times with desires. This is the heart that the shaytan, he preys upon. Watching the level of that person's iman in their heart sway from left to right, up and down, constantly in a state of confusion. One moment, they look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and direct their attention they direct their life for the sake of Allah And the next moment, they are being plagued with their desires. And they turn away. They forget to lock the door behind them. And the shaitan is ready to come in. He's a professional. Shaitan has been at this for years and years and years. And the shaitan knows how to play on your weaknesses. Your doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I lost my job. I lost a child, a family member. How can I turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Being displeased with what you have been given. The human being has been plagued with such things as greed. Being miserly. Being envious and jealous of their neighbors. They are diseased with Things like backbiting, foul language, laziness when it comes to their ibadah from time to time. It's easier to stay asleep than it is to wake up and pray. It's easier to keep your money secure in your pocket than it is to give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We at times display bad behavior due to our own desires and wants. And these are the moments that the shaitan is waiting and encouraging us and putting in front of us more opportunity for worldly gain, trying to distract us from that which is most important, and that is meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a good, clean, pure heart. The shaitan, this is his playground. He only wants you to be bankrupt because he himself is bankrupt. He's not looking for your iman or your faith, but he's looking for you to join him in his misery and ultimately to remove you from the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is al-jannah. Brothers and sisters, sometimes 
We have to think like a criminal. We have to think like a criminal in order to know how to protect our prized possession. We have to be able to identify our weaknesses in our security system so that we can guard our hearts. The most prized possession to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the heart of a believer filled with iman. There is nothing more valuable in his eyes than a resolute heart. Someone who is living for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So next week inshallah ta'ala we will begin to discuss how we can strengthen our hearts and begin to protect them from danger. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid wa akhiru da'wana nalhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa aqimis salah.